All right, I guess I just have seven and a half minutes. So I want to start with uh, the way my favorite uh, night uh, talk show host, Craig Ferguson, starts his talks. It's a great day for America because America won succeeded to the next round of the World Cup. And it's a great, there you go. It's also, a good, it's also a good day for England because they succeeded too. Uh, there you go. So which brings me right to the topic um, and kind of the story that I want to tell you. So last week or two weeks ago, because I'm a soccer fan too, I analyzed the FIFA homepage because I knew it's going to be a very popular site over the next couple of weeks. And I analyzed it based on the best practices from Google and Yahoo, from Steve. Uh, but I also brought in some of the best practices that we at Dynatrace have internally uh, and what we do a little bit different, I mean, it's great to look at, you know, caching and all that stuff, but we, because we're very deep embedded into the browser, we get things like total JavaScript tracing, we get into the rendering engine, so we can actually figure out things like how long does it take for the user to actually see something once he enters the URL and then till he gets the first visual impression. How long does it take till the initial page content is loaded and how long does it take till the page is fully loaded? So I really encourage you to read that blog if you go to blog.dynatrace.com. Based on that blog, we also came up with some best practice documents, and you will get the URL later on, where we really talk about which additional KPIs, key performance metrics, we can now get by using the HX edition, by getting all this in-depth data of, again, rendering, JavaScript execution, network round trips, uh, XHR calls. And so it took me about a day to analyze the website uh, and to write the blog, and this is kind of a long time, and we kind of, kind of try to figure out how can we make that faster, because we want to make this feature, like, these analysis capabilities available as easy as possible to everybody. And that's why we've worked on the Dynatrace AHX edition 2.0. So by tomorrow morning, you can download this uh, 2.0 version. Uh, it's going to be available in the, in the first beta version, and we encourage everybody to download it and use it. And what I'm going to show you is now how fast I can actually analyze the website and basically come to the same conclusions I, I came on in the blog. So once, once you install the AHX edition, you get the Dynatrace AHX edition client, and I configured the FIFA World Cup as one of my sites, and when I click on it, uh, it, it brings up the, uh, the browser, and I don't have to ask anybody to not use the Wi-Fi because I'm actually wired here. So it's, I know it's, it's a joke that has been played a lot in this conference, but anyway. So this is the page, the US one, England one, and then I click through the individual pages. I want to see the matches that have been played so far, uh, and I want to look at the groups. What's happening in the background, you can see on the toolbar here, Dynatrace HX edition is actually collecting a lot of information. And uh, like what I said before, the download, what's been downloaded, which JavaScript has been executed, rendering times, and, uh, and also CPU timing. When I close the browser, uh, what happens now is the, uh, the live session that I had here on the browser is going to move under my stored session. So everything that I've recorded so far is now available for me for offline diagnostics. And if I double click on it, and those of you that know the HX edition 1.6, that's something new that you will see, is a new performance report. Uh, you will see some ranks here. So we also go into the same direction that Wiselow and PageSpeed are going in ranking pages. We do it a little bit different, though. Um, we do not only rank on those things like how many objects are cached, how many round trips do you have, how many objects are, have a short cache header, or with how many images can you actually compress. We look at these metrics too, and we also list all of these down here uh, in our report, like on the caching, network, uh, and server side and JavaScript. But what we really want to factor in, and that's what's really important for the end user, is how long does it take for the end user to see something? So it's a time for the first uh, visual impression. How long does it take for the initial page to be loaded? And how long does it take for the page to be fully loaded? So these really factor a lot into uh, the overall page rank that we have. We know it depends on your network speed. So it's not a value that is consistent depend, uh, across all your machines at different locations. But in the end, what really matters is performance to the end user. And that's why we really want to measure in uh, this time as well. So the, uh, the, green, uh, the, the green, orange, and red is basically, we measure it against thresholds that we've internally specified. Uh, all these thresholds and exactly how we calculate all these ranks are well documented in those best practice documents that you can, you just with a simple click, uh, on, uh, on, on these performance reports, you get to all these best practice documents uh, where you can uh, read uh, how we do the calculation, how we do our KPIs, uh, and, and, and what we really encourage everybody, like if you scroll down, here are our, our thresholds, and it's really an example about, about how, how we do things. We really encourage everybody to give us feedback because these are values, that those thresholds are values based on, our, on what, we, what, what we have seen so far. 
um, but we are totally open and, and want to get more feedback on it. So what can we see here? Uh, again, we, we have an overall grading, but we have individual gradings, and then we can click through, let's say, browser caching seems to be not uh, really done very perfectly here on that page. So I get similar to Wise, uh, Wise and PageSpeed information about how many objects and images uh, are static or dynamic, how many of these actually impact my rank, how many objects have no cache or a, a cache expiration set in the past, how many have a very short expiration header. On the network tab, we see do we have any uh, HDB redirects, 400s or 500s, uh, how many CSS files do I have on there that I can potentially merge? Uh, how many images do I have on there that are served on the same domain that could potentially be merged and spread it? Uh, or how many JavaScript files do I have from how many domains uh, and that can potentially be, again, merged and, and therefore uh, speed up my web page? We also look, and that's where Dynatrace basically, you know, this is a free tool, but where Dynatrace really makes the bread and butter uh, is on the server-side analysis. So we have a tab here where we show you how much time is actually spent on the server time on those dynamic requests. And if you have Dynatrace on the server side, from here you can actually drill down into what's going on on the server side. Uh, it's an integrated solution where you have the stage exhibition and then you can drill down and say, hey, what's going on? I want to see what, Java, what, what Java code or .NET code is executed, which database statements are actually executed on those requests. Uh, feel free to click on those links and you get more information. What's really cool and what we, I think we are pretty alone here um, is, is the JavaScript uh, tab. And I want to click to the second page here. On the JavaScript tag, we show you, are you not totally alone, but alone for IE. I know, Steve, I see you. Yeah. Uh, PageSpeed is doing a good job too. But I, this works for IE 6, 7, and 8. We're working on Firefox support. Uh, so for, for IE, I think we're really pretty much alone. Um, what you see on the JavaScript tag tab is your slowest JavaScript handlers. Like I, I had some script handlers that, uh, that there's one that uh, takes 2.5 seconds. So if you click on it, you actually see uh, the, the forward traces. That means which methods is it calling, and you can you can drill in. That's the pure path. Uh, what our main technology, core technology that we brought to the HX side. Uh, but what's interesting as well is we are also analyzing calls to jQuery or a prototype. So all those dollar methods that we've seen are being heavily used, obviously, because it's convenient. But a lot of people make the mistake that they make uh, lookups by class name, which is very slow in IE. So they explicitly uh, point out these calls to, to jQuery methods that are very slow. And for instance, here on this page, I have a single call that uh, resolves an, uh, an object by class name, and it takes 2.4 seconds. And the reason for that, why it's so slow in IE, IE does not have the native support for looking up elements by class name, and therefore frameworks like jQuery have to, brow have to parse the whole DOM or iterate through the whole DOM. And am I already running out of time? Ooh, all right. Uh, last tab, <laughs> they kicked me out. The last tab on the KPI tab, uh, we have all these new cool metrics. Um, first impression, visual impression, and the, the last before they really kicked me off, Upload to show slow. So you can upload your result to show slow and, um, and, uh, yeah, and compare yourself with others. And uh, again, download the better tomorrow morning and uh, bring us feedback. Give us feedback. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. I assume that this kind of crowd, everyone here will have known about Firebug and probably use it all the time. So I won't give you a, a detailed uh, view of Firebug, but I'll tell you about new things that we're putting in to 1.6 and some things that you that we put into 1.5 that you might not know about. Uh, one of the things that we want to focus on in uh, Firebug 1.6 and going forward is the mini Firebug extensions, right? There's 30 or 40 extensions now, and you may not know about many of them. You probably know about YSlow, PageSpeed, a few others like that, but there's a whole bunch out there, and we'd like to figure out how to make it easier for you to use them. So what we're going to do is we're going to create bundles of extensions we're calling Firebug Swarms, and we're going to test those together and have them installed together. So it's very easy for you to get all the extensions together and be assured that they're going to work together. When we started to look into that, we realized we had to make a couple of small changes to the, to the Firebug UI to make this work out. One of them is that the, the panel tabs get lost, so we're going to add a couple of um, scroll bars to the panel tab. We're also going to add this, uh, we've also added this little drop down. So we're going to go with this opt out scheme. You're going to get a bunch of uh, extensions all at once, and the ones that you don't find yourself using, you can just get rid of those tabs and not have to see them in your way. Another small feature we've added 
for 1.6 is uh, panel navigation. So you can go between the panels with uh, these little arrow keys here. But the, of course, you're going to remember the key bindings for that, just like a, the forward and backward navigation you use in the web browser. Now, I assume that most of you guys are net panel people. Uh, in Firebug 1.5, which came out uh, earlier this year, we did a lot of work to improve the accuracy of the net panel uh, in conjunction with some work that was done in Mozilla Codebase. In 1.6, then, we didn't have to make too many changes to the net panel. One of them is we added the ability to uh, see the paint events. So if you use the little uh, drop down there to um, turn on the browser paint events uh, option, then you'll see little green lines on the timeline that correspond to when the paint events. And since you guys are all performance gurus, you'll know how to use that information to make the actual user experience faster. Uh, we also have uh, a new uh, net export extension for Firebug, which is closely related to what uh, the, you saw the last, in the last Vandy's talk there. It exports the content of the net panel in a format that's been worked out by um, my colleague Jan Advarko in conjunction with the other people who do uh, network analysis stuff, this HAR format. So you can take the data out of Firebug and you can put it into the other tools and use them to do different kinds of analysis of the net traces. Uh, that includes uh, HTTP watch, page speed, and so forth. There's a, the net export adds both this button to do it automatically right here, and also, oh, let's turn that back off. And also a, a menu so you can upload them directly to Show Slow, or you can put them onto your hard drive. So that's the net export uh, Firebug extension. In 1.5, we added a number of features to integrate the various panels with the JavaScript. And so I wanted to show you one of those, actually a couple of those today. One is the uh, net, we'll break on network event. So if you have an AJAX event, but you're not sure what JavaScript triggers it, you know, you happen to be working with a pretty big JavaScript application that happens these days, what you can do is breakpoint from the event directly into your code. There's various ways you can do it. One I'll show you is to click this um, pause button on the left-hand side of the net panel, and that sets up a trigger. Next AJAX event will drop you into JavaScript, and I have one wired to this button here. So when we do that AJAX event, then we drop ourselves into the script panel. On the line, you can see the send request there. A bubble comes up telling you what, uh, what triggered that event and also the uh, request URL. And then you're in, you're in the debugger. You can, uh, you, know, you can see the uh, variables over here. You can click through the call stack. Uh, you can see our new um, uh, scope chain over there. So uh, that's one way to get a better understanding of what's going on in your code if you're working in a big system. The same feature, get that out of there. The same feature uh, is comprehensive in the sense that uh, we also have breakpoints on individual events. You go into the net panel, left-hand side. If you have a post event, you just can put, uh, click on that, and it'll break the next time that kind of event occurs. You also make it conditional on the parameters of the network event. So if you have a, a, um, a lot of AJAX requests, you can actually break on a particular one. We've, we've also done this in all the panels in Firebug, uh, so I'll show you the one for the HTML events. Use the inspect feature to find this element, and then you can uh, set the break on attribute change there, and that's going to trigger a breakpoint whenever the attribute of this particular element changes. So somewhere in your code, you happen to find that you're changing the attribute, turning it back to green here. It'll drop you into the debugger again. It shows you what attribute changed, and you'll get the, the call stack, and, and you can figure out why the heck that thing turned green. Let's make sure we don't stay up, stopped. We've also allow extensions to use the same facility. So for example, we have uh, 
an extension called Fire Cookie, which allows you to uh, look at and mani manipulate the cookies from a site. Well, you can, you can use breakpoints in that um, mechanism as well so that you can break into the code that might be changing the cookie values. So that's a quick look at uh, what we've done in Firebug uh, 1.6 and 1.5. Uh, there's URLs to all of our systems there. We're very interested in feedback, and of course, we'd like to have more users. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. So uh, like Steve said, most of you are probably familiar with Wiseflow. Um, and I segue to the Firebug talk, so it's an extension to Firebug. But I'm here to try to show you that, that there's more to Wiseflow than it meets the eye. It's kind of a three-in-one sort of deal. So first, the most obvious, it's a lean tool, right? You run it on the page. You get uh, a report of the performance, uh, uh, low-hanging fruits. Then uh, it could be used as a monitoring tool. All right, once you run it either yourself or you set up a cron job to run headless Firefox or something, then you can send those results and collect them and present them in, in uh, any way you like. So two tools worth mentioning. I think everybody mentioned Show Slow. So, and Sergey has a, a talk this afternoon, so that's great. So those two tools come from the community. Show Slow is a, um, a way to collect metrics, um, performance metrics, open repository. And GT Metrics, if you haven't seen that, really nice, uh, cool uh, web UI to run both PageSpeed and uh, Wiseflow. Uh, a really good UI, which is a rare thing for developer tools, right? And the third thing is that the Wiseflow is actually a platform or a framework uh, for, um, uh, for developing your own rules and uh, your own checks. So basically, there's two concepts here. One is the rules, and then the rule set. So a rule is just one check saying, OK, is this uh, thing gzipped or not? And the rule set is a combination of a bunch of rules. And the API to write extensions to Wiseflow, so that's an extension to an extension to uh, an extension, right? It's really simple. There are just two, uh, two uh, methods uh, you should be aware of. Register rule is where you pass an, a JavaScript object which represents your rule. So it has an ID, name, information, more. And the, the most important thing is that lint function. So uh, YSLO will pass to your function a reference to the document, an object containing all the, um, the way to query all the components, and so on. And at the end, you just return an object saying, this is the result, this is the score that I give you for my custom rule, and any additional messages, and also, optionally, a list of offending components. And then there's the register rule set, which is uh, just uh, another object. You give it a name, and you say, OK, these are the rules that I want to be in my rule set. So you can use some of your custom ones, or you can use some of the, the, those that ship with Wiseflow, uh, the Yahoo rules. Uh, so, so as an example, there's this extension called Wisepy, not public yet. This is a guy from, from Yahoo Search did a, a security extension, basically a bunch of security checks um, in an automated way, so it's pretty nice. Again, nothing to do with performance, right? It's a, it's a platform to create any sort of tools. And the other one that I created just for the purposes of this demo is this uh, web testing framework, right? Just an example of how easy that is to do, right? So you can grab the, the code and the... Uh, um, and the extension. Uh, so basically, uh, if we look at the code really, so again, this is a, a, bunch of, uh, a bunch of calls to register rule, and then at the end, you know, you create your own rule setting saying, okay, these are all my, uh, all my rules. So then, if you, it surfaced right here in the drop down of stuff, so this is the WisePy, and this is the web testing framework. So just uh, you know, run the test right here, and then you get you know this a beautiful page. Nothing. So this is a, a tool that just checks for uh, kind of shady development practices like using blink tags and font tags and all that stuff. Um, so uh, I, yeah. So that's uh, again uh, what I wanted to say today is just the, the three-in-one sort of a deal. You can lend the performance monitoring over time, and that uh, you can extend it with uh, your own stuff. And I'm right on time. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so I'm Brian McQuaid, uh, lead developer on PageSpeed, which is a free uh, open source uh, tool you can use to analyze a web page and get specific suggestions on how to make that web page, uh, improve the performance of that web page. So to get uh, PageSpeed. Uh, to get PageSpeed, uh, you can go to you know, your favorite search engine and, and search for PageSpeed. 
uh, navigate to the download page here. You'll need Firefox and Firebug, both of which you can install here. And then finally, you can click here to install PageSpeed. So once you've done so, we can bring that up. Uh, you get a new tab in Firebug. We're a Firebug extension. And you can navigate to PageSpeed and then uh, run PageSpeed uh, to get those results uh, right in the browser. And we produce this list of uh, you know, specific suggestions with things you can do to make the page faster. Order them from highest impact to lowest impact. Um, and then you can drill down on any one of these. Thanks. Okay. You can drill down on any one of these uh, to you know, find out what specifically we're suggesting. So for instance, minify HTML. Here we say if you minify, if you minify the uh, main HTML page on the site, you can reduce its size by about 3K. And in addition, we provide you with uh, an option to download that minified content so you can save it and you know, use it right on your web page. So we try to make it really easy for you to you know, automatically optimize your content and then be able to use that optimized content. And all of this uh, optimization runs locally in the browser, so if you're developing a sort of uh, pre-production service, uh, you, know, you don't have to post any of the resources to a public website. Um, everything happens right here locally really quickly. Um, so let's see. So in addition, you know, if you want to understand more specifically why uh, one of these uh, techniques is important or how you can go about implementing it, you can click through We've got our documentation site, which goes into detail on um, you know, both how you implement one of these things and also why it's important to do so. So um, you know, we try to provide all the information you need as a developer to make good decisions about how to optimize your website. So let's see. In addition, uh, one of the things that we've, one of the things that we've uh, uh, tried to address recently is um, answering the question of you know, if my performance isn't uh, optimal, is it my content or is it third party content that, that's uh, you know, potentially slowing down my page? So we recently added a, um, a feature to analyze you know, just the ads, just the trackers, or just the content of your page to sort of help you answer that question. So if we choose trackers only, for instance, what we see is that the score goes up, so the trackers aren't uh, adversely impacting performance all that much, and we can drill down and find out specifically you know, that there's uh, some optimizations that uh, this tracker could apply, analytics could apply to make uh, the performance improve uh, a bit. So then we can go back and say, okay, so if it's not the trackers, is it my content? And indeed, uh, the content here, uh, you know, there are a number of suggestions that we can apply uh, to improve performance here. So you can see that uh, analytics doesn't appear in this set, it's just the content of the local site. So let's see, why don't we, right. Let me see. Okay, so why don't we, so uh, one of the other things um, that we've built is a uh, PageSpeed SDK. So we've been working for the last year on a C++ library that isn't, um, well, I'll go back that in a minute, isn't uh, specific, uh, so they're tightly coupled to any one browser and can be reused in other web browsers, other tools. Uh, you know, offline tools, command line tools, backend processing, et cetera, to let you automatically take all that page speed logic and just automatically run it in any environment. So um, we've seen some nice adoption of, of the SDK. Um, uh, Steve built a, a web page that uses uh, a functionality in the tool to take a HAR file and actually emit page speed results that you can find on his website. And uh, Webmetrics actually has a nice uh, new tool in their lab section that you can use. Uh, you give it a URL and it comes back and gives you page speed results in the browser. So you don't need a browser plugin at all to run that. Um, and you know, as an example, this is just a pre-release demo, something we're working on. But um, you know, we've sort of uh, linked together the PageSpeed SDK, uh, the Chromium browser, and uh, Apache web service to sort of build this automated similar uh, tool where you can, and this is just a pre-release demo. Um, it only works for CNN. So. Uh, we're working towards other sites, but um, you know the example is that you you click, and I've come prepared. I appear not to have network, so we switch over to uh, this tab. And essentially, the idea is that it posts this to a website, uh, to a web service, which you know goes and actually renders that whole page, collects all the information about it, returns a JSON object with the results, and then we can format that in the browser. So we can drill down, for instance. and uh, you know, get those specific suggestions right here. So let me, um, we've got two minutes, let, let me go back to the tool. We've heard from a couple tool vendors, uh, a couple of former demos here about you know, that time to first paint, you know, how, how do we improve that, uh, Dynatrace spoke about that, uh, Firebug talked about paint events. So I want to talk about a couple of unique rules in the PageSpeed rule set that can help you really optimize that time to first paint. Uh, the ability to, um, 
identified uh, JavaScript that's candidate for uh, deferral, as well as uh, CSS that's uh, possible to defer. And the idea is that uh, lots of sites start out declaring you know, CSS and JavaScript needed on the page in the head, but until that content is downloaded, parsed, and executed, the user's there staring at a blank screen. So the more you can, uh, if there's content, JavaScript or CSS, that's not actually needed in the initial page load, um, it's valuable to defer loading that content. So we've got a couple rules. Let me see if I can. All right, so we've got a couple rules here. Uh, defer loading of JavaScript being one. And the browser's not cooperating with me. That is not good. Um, all right, so the idea in any case is that, and I'm not sure what's going on here, this has not happened before, uh, is that you can drill down and find out specifically, you know, of all the JavaScript that's loaded on the page, how much of that JavaScript, let me just say refresh analysis here, how much of that JavaScript is um, not actually called, and then we'll give you the specific JavaScript functions that weren't called so that you can go in, optimize your source so that, uh, you know, that code is not um, not loaded. And then there's another. There's a. Okay, so there's another for CSS. I've got 12 seconds left. Uh, you know, I'll be at the, the Google booth. Uh, feel free to come by. If you have questions about integrating the PageSpeed SDK, we'd love to work with you on that, or just general questions about the PageSpeed tool. Be happy to talk to you. Thank you.